All right, calculus folks, we are uh, we are here at section 3.7 related rates, one of my favorite subjects in Calc 1. Uh, this section is going to be super fun. So um, the idea of related rates is essentially um, in real life when you have quantities that are related to each other, um, some sort of dependence, then um, if uh, things are changing over time, right, things are changing in time, then uh, the, re the not only are the quantities related to each other, but also the rates at which they're changing are related to each other. And so uh, we're going to be looking at some sort of application type problems where we're uh, doing a little bit of modeling and then using the implicit differentiation idea that was, um, that was introduced in the previous uh, section, two sections ago. Um, we're going to use that. So if you haven't learned about implicit differentiation, go back and watch those videos first. So let's begin with this idea. Let's suppose you take a rock and you drop your rock into a pond and it makes a big splash. And let's draw a little splash here. Yeah, it makes a splash, right? And then that splash uh, then causes ripples to radiate outwards, okay? So as the ripples radiate outwards, the radius of those ripples actually increases at like a constant rate as they're going out. Um, so what we're going to do is is take a look at um, the the situation, and we're going to ask a couple of different questions. One is, well, okay, if that radius is increasing at a constant rate, what is the corresponding rate of change in say the circumference of those circular ripples? What is the corresponding rate of change in like the area of those circular ripples, the area enclosed by the circle, that kind of thing, okay? So um, let's, uh, let's say here for this example that radius uh, of the ripples here is increasing at a constant five centimeters per second. Um, so I could, say that in calculus terms by, uh, by, by representing, it, representing it as a derivative. This is the radius r, and the derivative is going to be with respect to time. Now the time variable might not be something I can really draw in my picture. Maybe I can just put a note on the side that time is t. We're going to use lowercase t. So um, what I'll, the derivative we're talking about would be the derivative of radius with respect to time which, be, which would be written like that, dr over dt. So that's going to equal 5. Okay. So now we're going to ask two questions. A, how fast is the circumference changing? And B, how fast is the area changing? So as a reminder, we have these uh, circular ripples that are coming out like this from the central point. And we have the radius, which is this distance right here. Okay, that is our radius. I'm gonna lowercase r represents that. Okay, the circumference is the distance measured around the outside of the circle. So let's say we're talking about this this outermost ripple at the moment, the one that I've got the radius labeled for, um, that distance measured around the outside there, that is the circumference C. And then the area is talking about that area there, that area on the inside of the circle there um, is the area. So we've got R, C, and A, okay? So to answer question A, uh, we need a, a formula for the circumference in terms of the radius. Radius is information we're given, um, it's, a, it's a variable we're given some information about. So we want things to be in terms of radius if possible. So the formula we need is the circumference is 2 pi times the radius. So now what we're going to do is take that, that equation, which involves variables c and r, and we're going to differentiate both sides of that equation, just like we do in implicit differentiation, except we're going to be differentiating with respect to t. So what we've got to do is think of every single variable as being a function of time. 
because radius is changing with respect to time, circumference is changing with respect to time as the circle gets bigger. So everything is a function of time, which means I'm technically applying the chain rule whenever I do a derivative of anything with respect to t. So the first thing I'll write is a derivative with respect to t of the left side is derivative with respect to t of the right side. And I'm using the Leibniz notation for the differential operator here, d over dt. Uh, so on the left side, that is just the derivative of the, of the circumference with respect to time. Uh, that is the answer we're looking for. How fast is the circumference changing? That is that derivative. And on the right side, we can use the um, constant multiple rule. We're still going to have this 2 pi. And then we'll have to do the derivative with respect to time of the radius. Well, that is just, let's just write that by name. Okay, call that by name. It is dr over dt, which we know is equal to 5 centimeters per second. Should put that in here. So now um, what I'll have is uh, this is going to be 2 pi times 5 centimeters per second. So the answer is the circumference is changing at a rate of 10 pi centimeters per second. And that's constant. So um, as the ripple goes outwards uh, the uh, and the radius changes at 5 centimeters per second, the circumference is changing at 10 times pi centimeters per second. All right, part B. Now let's do it with area. So uh, the area formula for a circle, area is pi times r squared. We'll start the same way. We want to know what's the rate of change with respect to time. So we differentiate with respect to time. It doesn't matter that time is not a variable in this equation. We just think of every single variable as a function of time. So on the left, we have dA over dt, which is the rate that we are trying to calculate, right? We're trying to find that. And on the right, we have the constant multiple rule. So there's a pi. Um, but then uh, we also, but then we apply the um, power rule right here to r squared. And we get times 2 times r to the power 1. But then we have to apply the chain rule. OK, r is a function of t. So we'll then multiply by the derivative of r with respect to t. So that was, that was technically, we just differentiated a composition of functions, right? It was r squared. The derivative of that is 2r. But then r being a function of t um, means we have to multiply by the derivative of r with respect to t. OK, so chain rule right there. OK, so uh, what we have here now is dA over dt is equal to, uh, we've got 2 pi, I'm going to rearrange those, uh, times r times dr over dt, and dr over dt is 5. So that would be times 5 centimeters per second. Uh, OK, this is 10 pi again, but then still times r centimeters per second. That seems like the wrong units, first of all, because area is in uh, centimeters squared, not centimeters. Um, but there's an issue here, which is that this appears to depend on r. OK, we've just discovered that the rate of change in area is not constant, right? Uh, with, the, with, the, with the radius changing at a constant rate and the circumference changing at a constant rate, turns out the area actually is not changing at a constant rate. It's proportional to the radius. So as the radius increases, the rate of change in area is going gonna, is gonna to be increasing as well. It's like as the radius gets bigger, it's taking on area inside the circle faster and faster and faster. And that area is increasing at a quicker and quicker rate. So we can't really answer this question, how fast is the area changing, without specifying a little bit more information. So how fast is the area changing? Sorry, my handwriting's a bit messy here. When? Uh, we're going to put a, a caveat here. When the radius is, we're going to go with 12 centimeters. Okay, so, we, so we've changed the question now. Now instead of just asking how fast is the area changing, we're specifying, what we're doing is we're specifying an instant in time. And we're doing that by specifying a value of the radius, r equals 12 centimeters. Okay, um, That identifies a particular moment in time. So now we can say the rate of change in area with respect to time is going to be our 10 
um, let me back up actually to this line here. It's 2 pi times the radius, which is 12 centimeters, and then times the 5 centimeters per second. And now we have, now we don't have any variables left over. Uh, and now our units make more sense because centimeters times centimeters, which is centimeters squared, which is how you measure area, per second. So this all ends up being 120 pi centimeters squared per second. And that is our answer for the rate of change in area with respect to time. So this is a related rates problem. Uh, we actually kind of did two related rates problems here. Um, I think we're just going to do a bunch more examples. 